Good morning, and welcome to our service for the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. Be still and be aware of God's presence within and around. The flowers on the altar today are given by Ruth and Langren Jones to the glory of God and in loving memory of Harry Wilson Jones, Langren's brother. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and in its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who calls out their hosts and numbers them, calling them by name, Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, 
My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Here ends the reading.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And when he went through Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning. Set us free from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life known in Jesus Christ. Our collect this morning is a prayer of hope that recognizes our struggle to live in the redemptive power that Jesus brought near. Oh, we know the story of Jesus, and we cling to that as we approach death. We cling to the one who will bring life out of death. But I believe we also all know the struggle to live this as a daily power in our lives. We know we belong to another kingdom, another way, and yet too often we are bound to the ways of this world. So set us free, O Lord. Bondage or liberty, scarcity or abundance, death or life. We have a choice in what we bind and what we let bind us. People who have experienced slavery find connections with the stories of other enslaved people. And the enslaved Africans in America found a deep connection with the sacred stories of the Hebrew people. For they understood bondage and living in exile. They lived the stories of Moses. They too desired to hear God say, let my people go. These stories offered them hope in the revelation of a God redeeming any situation. And in the gospel stories in Christ Jesus, they met the one who could free them where they were at that very time in whatever situation. And if you went to one of their Sunday evening worship stories, historians tell us, you would especially know this hope through their music. For many of their songs told stories of being a free soul and flying home to Africa. Although they were in physical bondage in America, in Christ they were free. In Christ their spirits soared home on the wings of angels. In Christ they endured exile, they endured the pain of suffering that enslavement brings with the hope of mounting on wings. 
And like the Hebrew people, they also understood and sang of God's abandonment. They understood the Hebrew people's feelings of being forgotten, of suffering in exile, of their way being hidden from the Lord. My way is hidden from the Lord. This is an anguished cry that only comes from suffering. And I wonder during this pandemic year how many of us have uttered those words. It is true that in suffering we often feel unseen, even by God. We might say, God has let us down. God has allowed evil to crush us. Perhaps we are bound to an idea of who God should be and who God should not be. I think this feeling of being unseen and forgotten by God is rooted in the struggle to know God, a God whose mercy and love extends so wide even to include those who may enslave us. That is a difficult God to know. And I think it is often in those most difficult moments that we often find freedom to see God in you, to see a God who is there with us in the muck of life, not preventing that muck, but right there in it with us. Perhaps when circumstances for us into any kind of exile, only then do we find the freedom of God's love. Perhaps in vulnerability, we become more open. Perhaps when we feel we are the least, the loneliness, or the most suffering, only then do we discover the true power that mounts us on its wings. Perhaps an experience of scarcity will lead us to abundant life. And perhaps when we are in need, we understand servanthood a bit better. The poetry of this passage from Isaiah is fuel for God's divine fire to burn within us. There is paradoxically grace and strength in suffering. In exile, we may find the freedom we need to step into the land of God. And when we begin to inhabit that land of God, we begin to see God as God is, not as how we make God into be. And we begin then to have a better understanding of how God watches me. And you know, being in the land of God, that kingdom that Jesus did bring near, that is the place where our discipleship begins. Being a disciple is about molding our lives less around the security that this world seems to provide and more life, a life lived in exile. A life that can find strength in weakness a life that can find healing in suffering, a life that finds life in death. That is the life of a disciple of the suffering servant. My friends, even in those times where we feel God does not see our way, we must remember we must remember that God is our creator and is still creating. And God invites us to be lifted up unto kingdom's wings. We can live with sins that bind us or we can fly on the wings of our creator God. Because there is power in what Jesus brought near. So this week, May God's creating hope be at work within you and me, setting us free indeed. And in being in and in being unbound by our sins, we may 
Breathe in that air of abundant life that Jesus brought and brings near. Amen.